What's up, y'all? This is Henny. And listen, today I have got to talk about iOS 14 and iPad OS 14. Had it on my devices for about two weeks now and uh, pretty beta, but at the same time, it has some really, really cool new features. So let's go ahead and dive deep into iOS 14, iPad OS 14, and see what things I'm really enjoying and what things I really could care less about. Let's go! <laughs> The business, the business. So yep, I've been running iOS 14 on my main phone, my iPhone 11 Pro for over two weeks now, as well as my iPad mini for the same amount of time. And um, let's go in and talk iOS 14 first. Man, I was on my way on a family vacation when the WDC uh, live stream was announced and I was watching it, trying to watch it and listen to it as we are headed down to the island. And uh, man, I wish I could have done my reaction video because I was pretty pumped up on all the things that's happening and all the things that I can see in the future, not only for iOS devices, but also for Mac devices as well. So this is my phone, this is how I have it set up. And um, you know, the biggest thing that I've enjoying so far is this new layout. Uh, I really love to have a very clean looking desktop if possible. And the fact that, you know, this new device has the app library, I just took it upon myself to put all my apps into the app library and not have any other pages. I have four main apps that I use quite a bit, the photos, the settings, um, you know, the calendar and my notes app, as well as what they call a smart uh, widget, which has my battery life, my activity ring, and uh, the weather. And it, basically everything else is in the app library. And I truly appreciate that because, you know, not only can I swipe down and see series suggestions and see what I've been using quite a bit, but also, you know, I can easily just text what I need and not have so many like folders and so many, uh, you know, different pages of apps. So being able to have just a smart, you know, dynamic widget front page. Yeah. You know, Android's had it forever, and uh, I believe you know, this is a great update for iOS. But let's be real. The first week I had this all like last week in, you know, a little bit of a week before, this beta was horrible. Uh, I couldn't really do anything in Safari. My mail wouldn't really launch. And, you know, when you put it on your main phone, it's very, very frustrating. But hey, somebody got to do it, right? But after they put the public beta out there, it's been it's been running very, very smoothly. So, you know, for the most part, that's been the biggest change for me over the last couple of weeks is the way it's laid out, you know, the new widgets. So, yeah, you know, the things like the uh, the compact calls where it kind of like, you know, doesn't take up your full screen when you get a call come in, when you get a FaceTime come in. I enjoy that. The, the minor tweaks on that are awesome as far as just making sure it doesn't distract you all the way from what you were doing at the time. If you were taking a note or if you were take, making a text call and you know somebody calls in, it doesn't completely take over your screen and make and you know kind of blow your train of thought. So I can enjoy you know the compact calls feature as well as like the picture and picture video feature. The, the main problem is with YouTube, which has, I, I watch a lot of YouTube myself, um, it doesn't necessarily work on my device. If I do a YouTube video and then I, you know, want to swipe up and say I'm in full screen and I want to swipe away, hey, doesn't work yet. I would love for that to work with YouTube as well. Now, some things in my two week overview just haven't started to work yet just because not everybody in my, you know, family and friends list is on it. But like the group messaging where you can auto reply to other people in the same group or something like using AirPods to go in between devices seamlessly without you even having to tell it to do it. Man, I'm hoping that, uh, you know, I can get those availability soon. But, you know, I mean, I really just enjoy the new screen, the new flow. That's been basically my vibe so far. But, you know, when it comes to iPad OS, it's not been as big of an update as I would have liked. Now, you have this new function called Scribble, 
where you can set down and basically write anything in the search bar, whether I want to search for iOS 14. Um, see, sometimes it doesn't get it right. You might have to do the dot and the I, iOS 14. Okay, beta search, boom. Or if you're in a note, right? If you're in a note, I think this is gonna be very, very good for those of you who are students and necessarily take want to take notes and dictate that uh you know like uh this is my ios 14 beta overview <laughs> period i can tap on that i can select all and i can copy the text and let's see how well it did this is my Josh 14 beta overview. Well, my I's and my J's just aren't as on point as others. So, uh, but yeah, you know, being able to dictate your own, you know, scribble in your own writing is gonna be very good. Now, using my iPad mini five and this old Apple pencil, I don't really use uh, the pencil as much with this device. Now I use it with my iPad pro over there, but uh, you know, for the most part, I use this as my all around walk around device every day around the crib. But other things like, you know, the, you know, having the drawer, the app drawer, um, being able to, you know, see things in photos or see things, uh, you know, with the drawer, I think that's, you know, that'll become handy. But iPad OS 13 was such a big overhaul, they didn't do as much as I would like with iPad OS 14. Now, I truly wish they had the app library functionality within that just to be able to have a clean desktop to be able to put more widgets on your desktop that would be crucial for a lot of people who want to see a lot of things dynamically on their you know their, the, the desktop of their device uh, and i hope that will come maybe within uh these next betas to be able to do the app library in ipad os just being able to have it on the side is okay but i'd love to have a very clean desktop with just widgets so some of the other functionality like this new uh, translate app is going to be great for my children using this being able to get good translation uh, between spanish and english and other you know foreign languages that they're taking in school it's going to be great algunas de las otras funciones como esta nueva aplicación de traducir serán geniales para mis hijos usando esto. The big thing for me is iOS 14 this year. iPad OS just hasn't wowed me as much over the last couple of weeks, you know, really playing with it on this device. And of course, I did not put it on my iPad Pro because I do too much work on that and I couldn't uh yeah, I gotta be able to get the work done. So um, I'm really hoping that with some of these music apps, it won't be as buggy with iOS 14. I haven't ran into too many issues, but it's always like making sure, you know, the AUV3 plugin codes for a lot of these DAWs and a lot of this other stuff really just works. Um, LumaFusion on this device seems to work pretty well on my iPhone, seems to be working pretty well. And you know, it, it it just got out the way, you know? Like, what can I say? The iPad OS 14 and iOS 14 just helped to get me more uh, organized and decluttered, which I'm trying to do in my entire life right now. But the biggest thing for me is this new Mac Silicon and how it's going to relate to, you know, a person who is on the fence between getting maybe a laptop and an iPad. Knowing now within the next few months, you'll be able to buy a Mac device like a laptop or an iMac um, and run iOS devices, iPad OS devices directly on that in the same capacity basically that you would use a uh, iPad or an iPhone, it really gets you wondering, you know, exactly what device is for which people. And I'm excited about that, knowing that, you know, if you're a musician, if you're a producer and you're really focused and fixed on like the laptop way of life and you, you know, you really rock with MacBook Pros and stuff like that, but you would really like be able to use some of those iPad apps alongside something like Logic Pro uh, or maybe use LumaFusion and be able to directly import that into Final Cut, you know, um, just those, just those availabilities are going to be 
so clutch when it comes to going in between a Mac and an iOS device. And so, you know, I'm really excited to see how powerful they'll be. I'm really excited to see um, how we'll be able to just intertwine all of these devices and make them even more seamless because that really helps the workflow in a way that, uh, uh, you know, I think is gonna be pretty game changing for a lot of us. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I have not been able to test I'm not going to test the uh, Mac OS Big Sur on this Mac Mini. I got too many Zoom calls and other things that I have to do on the weekly. So didn't want to say too much. Just want to kind of give you my overview on, um, you know, iPad OS, iOS 14, how I how it's been treating me so far, and what things I'm really looking forward to. So leave a comment or some questions down below. Let me know what you're thinking. If you've tried the beta. Uh, and how it's been working out for you. You know, I would love to hear what y'all got going on. But uh, yeah, that's my overview. Everybody was asking what were my thoughts. These are my initial thoughts and hopefully uh, you got something out of that. But I am definitely looking forward to the rest of this year as it relates to the synergy in all of these Mac devices. Catch y'all in the next one, man. Hit him out! <laughs> so faulty. Drop my Sony camera directly on my iPad. Manny, what a fail. Hopefully, uh, my warranty is still good. I was paying for the insurance. Damn it. Oh.